Good morning everyone. This is Melissa the Stamp Doc and today I'm going to be sharing four cards with you using the Hooray for Surprises stamp set and dies. Um, I started creating this class over a month ago and it was a little daunting because this is a different type of die set and I had to come up with a few little tips and tricks to make it work. So um, follow along with me. I have put in the description um, the link that if you'd like to purchase this stamp set and dies, you can do that. I also have a PDF tutorial available. You can get it free if you purchase the bundle through my link, or you can get it with um, a per it's $15 on my website along with my other tutorials. Um, also, I do still have a few of the class kits available. And so those will be available until they're out of stock. So I put the link there. Depending on when you watch the video, they may or may not be available. So if you're interested in that, those are there too. I do also have my Amazon link there because I'm going to be showing you a couple of products that I'm using along with this that I think are really helpful. So for this, you will need the bundle. Um, this isn't one that you can really substitute a lot of different stamp sets for, so you really do need this stamp set and this bundle to create the cards. And then we're using three different ink colors. We're using Crush Curry, Shaded Spruce, and Pool Party. Um, this is the first time I'm streaming to Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram all at the same time. So we're gonna just see how this goes today. If you come on, be sure to say hello. Um, I should be able to see your comments on there and let me know where you're from and if you're watching me live or if you're watching the replay. So let's get started. I'm gonna set these aside. Um, again, I'll be showing these as we go through. And we're going to start with the first card. So when you get one of my class kits, it's all going to come packaged in an envelope. And I'm going to just pull everything out. So I put all of your pieces in there. Now with this class kit, your die cutting was not done for you unless it was a die that was not in the um, kit. And you do, in our, my class kits, usually get to make two of each. And that is the case in this one also. We are using the Sunny Days Designer Series paper. And this paper was a free celebration product, so I hope you got your hands on some of it because it is really, really cute. So I am gonna be using my multi-purpose glue. And this little holder right here, this is something that I also got on Amazon that I do love to use. Um, and I think those are still available in a variety of different colors if you're interested in one. Not very expensive and really kind of saves me a lot of grief as far as making sure that the ink is down. So what I'm doing here, I have a petal pink card base and a basic white layer. And I have strips of the Sunny Days paper that I've already cut. And I'm just adding a little bit of that multi-purpose glue. I like to use that on something like this where I might need to wiggle these in place because it gives me a little it for, it's a little more forgiving than using one of the other adhesives so I've just got that down and you can see it just left a little bit of a border around the edges there and I'm going to go ahead and put that on my card base now one of the this is the only card in this series that is not interactive but I really thought this little strawberry print was super cute and I wanted to make use of it. So my front panel, I'm going to be stamping You're the Best and I'm doing that in Shaded Spruce. And again, if you don't have this color, you could always use just another green if you wanted or even black on this one. So we're going to do You're the Best there at the bottom. Go ahead and close that up. I've got extras over here, so I'm not going to worry about those. All right, we're going to go ahead and put that onto a shaded spruce layer. 
And again, all these measurements are in that PDF tutorial. So if you're interested in that, that's a great way to get it. Now you could either pop this up or you could put it flat on there. I'm a person that likes to use a lot of dimension. So I pop up a lot of my um, layers on my cards. But if you're going to be mailing your cards and you don't want to do that, don't feel bad about doing that. All right, so we're going to get all those off of there. I'm just going to put that right in the middle. So what I came up with on this is that if I use the die cuts, I'll show you which ones I used. So this one's still got some of the little red in there. So if you cut this, it just cuts out the little holes. So you have to do a second cut with the heart shape in order to cut that out. So you're going to cut out one of those and then also one in petal pink. And if you layer those two together, to me, that looked a lot like these little strawberries that are on here. So that's what I created. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. Now I did try using the adhesive sheets with this, and that was just kind of a mess. So um, really just kind of using either this or the fine tip glue will probably give you the best results. And you don't have to get it everywhere, just enough to kind of hold that down. Then we're going to line up those two hearts. And again, doesn't that look like strawberry seeds? They're really kind of cute. All right. And then I have just a little sliver here of um, shaded spruce. Um, I think this is about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to kind of cut that at an angle to create a stem. I'm going to put that right there. A little bit of glue on that. So we have a little strawberry stem and then I've got a little leaf here also and again because these have such open areas they really didn't work well with the adhesive sheets it kind of got all over everything so I didn't use those I'm just going to put that there all right so I've got my base strawberry here and I'm going to go ahead and put some dimensionals on this. And again, like I said, I get a little crazy with the dimensionals, so if you don't want to use that many, that is okay. All right, we're going to put that right there. And then I've got a little tiny little um, flower that I did. And I'm just going to put him on there, just with that. And also in your kits, if you bought a kit, you got some baker's twine. Baker's twine is one of those things that you, you can use on just about any project. If you need an embellishment, baker's twine is a great thing to use. So we're just going to kind of stick that in there. And the other thing you received were some rhinestones. And again, this is just another thing that's really easy and works with just about any project. So I'm going to put a little rhinestone in the center, and then I want just a little added bling here. So I'm going to put a couple down here also. I always like to do my embellishments in threes or odd numbers, so three, five, seven, nine, um, something like that. And then this is our final card. So this is just a different way of using that set and doesn't involve any of the mechanisms for that. So really cute really fun and just um you could really use this for just about any occasion but certainly great for spring and summer all right so our next three cards are the interactive cards and again this particular class really kind of gave me um some fits because i have a lot of rejects for this class um, i made a lot of cards before i came up with the ones i finally wanted to use so let me pull out all my pieces here because we're not going to use everything in this. Again, I put two in each card kit, so that's why there's a little more paper in here than we need it. Don't need those. We don't need those. Okay. So this card, when it comes to you, it's going to have this attached on there. And then right where it says open here, there's little perforations along this. You will pull that open and then it reveals the sentiment okay so the tricky part is getting all of that lined up 
Um, certainly, I didn't think I was going to be able to do that, and it did take a couple of tries before I did get it just right. So again, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on that. So the first thing I'm going to recommend that you do is that you use grid paper, typing paper, or even cardstock. You can use, you know, whatever kind of scrap paper you want. And whatever size you're going to be cutting out of, you want the template to be the same. So those of you that got a class kit, you're going to have a template that looks just like this for this card. So you're going to want to go ahead and separate that card, the little heart out. You're really not going to need that for anything, um, but definitely separate it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have actually die cut another circle. And these circles are from the Stylish Shapes dies. This is the largest one. And I'm going to put that template over it. Now, one of the things that's in my Amazon storefront is post-it note tape. And for this particular class, I, I recommend you have something like this because it'll really help things stay in place. But you want to tape those together. And the reason why is you don't want this slipping at all. You want that on there and on there good. And then you're going to take your die and you're going to place it in there also. So you're going to line it up where you've already cut that template. And then you want to put tape on that to hold it through as well. Okay, if this isn't making sense or anyone's having questions about that, let me know. So this is what you're going to drive through your um, die cut machine. And then this is what you're going to end up with. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. Because we're basically done with that except for our stamping. So you're still going to need your template for stamping also. All right, so we have our template here, and I'm going to put this on a foam pad so you can see it a little better. So we have our first one here, and then we have our inside one here. So our outside one, we are stamping with Pool Party ink, and we're going to do the big heart flower image. And the goal here is to line it up on that heart that you just die cut. Okay. And I did just about perfect on that, so good. <laughs> That's a relief. All right. Now on the inside, so again, let me bring in the full sample here. So this is the outside circle. On the inside, we're going to stamp Hope Your Birthday is Wonderful. And the way we're going to do that is, again, we want to line this up on the blank circle. Let me find our stamp here. And we're going to stamp that right there in that middle. Maybe off just a little bit, but that's pretty good. All right. So this stamp, this one, and this one is what we now have. So when we go to adhere this, we don't want any of this area, this inside die cut area, to have adhesive on it. So we're just going to go around the edges here and really kind of leave the rest of that okay. And what I like to do is just kind of stack them up so I can make sure I'm not covering them. Okay, so those two are just right there together. So when you go to pull up that tab, it's going to reveal the message underneath. Make sure that's on there good. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. And we're going to go ahead and put together the rest of the card. Isn't this paper beautiful? I, like I said, I really do hope you got some if you love it. Um, it did sell out towards the end of celebration. And if you get a class kit, there's, um, if you do the class kit with the bundle, I do have a full pack in there 
or if you do just the regular class kit, you get enough to make all of your cards and a little bit extra. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Back there. And again, all these measurements are in the PDF. And we're gonna go ahead and pop this up with some dimensionals just to give it a little oomph. So, there's that on there, and there's all sorts of little um, sayings on all of these too. So there's open here, pull um, for you, little things you could put like that. So on this one I'm going to use shaded spruce, and I'm going to use the little open here. And I'm going to stamp it towards this side, over the left side. Okay. And then I die cut a little tiny flower. I'm going to put it over here. I'm just going to put a little adhesive on that. There. And we're going to put, oops, lost my flower, didn't I? Put some dimensionals on the back of this. Let's see if we can get that flower to go back on there. Okay. And again I went ahead and did some baker's twine. So I'm gonna put I'm just gonna lay it on there and put this right over that. Whoops, I guess I need to take the backing off, don't I? I really need somebody here just to keep me on my toes. Alright. Go. Got that. And then of course we need our bling. Can't do anything without our bling. We're going to put a little gem right there in the center of that flower. Oops. And then a couple. So again, an odd number, doing five on that one. Okay. And there we go with our finished card. So then, of course, again, when you pull that off, when you pull off that little piece, this is what you're going to end up with. So you end up with that interactive card. Just really fun, um, just something a little extra. Now, if you did the Movers and Shakers class from last month, you could also do this as a shaker card below following those type of instructions. So there's a lot of extra things you can do that with this, but I wanted to start with just the basics at the beginning. Okay, so on to our next one. I think this one is my favorite. Let me get all the goodies out. And I'll show you how it works. We need that this and this. All sorts of fun stuff here. All right. So what I would recommend that you do first on this card is to stamp the background. So this one, this is how it is going to look. Okay. So what I did, I again used that Sunny Days Designer Series paper and I'm going to go ahead and stamp the little cakes all over it. So let me find my pool party and my cake image. So we're going to do that on the paper here so we don't get our mat all dirty. All right. And this is just a random stamp. You don't have to do anything crazy here. In fact, the more random, the better. And I'll show you how I cut that circle. <laughs> All right. So this one's probably your trickiest one as far as how to do your template. So with the template, you've got layers. So you have 
the outer layer here and the inner layer. So what I did is I cut one the size of the inner layer, one the size of the outer layer, and I made my template by running, lining those up and then running this through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. So again, there's a little bit of a border around it just like there is here so that I will have that lined up properly. Then I put this one on here just like we did with the heart, taped it up and put my little circle right here, taped that on so that that ran through. So I've already done this, but this is how you would do that. So tape this up, make sure it stays solid on there and run that through your machine, okay? And then we have our little white piece, that our layer that goes behind there. And let me see where that went, okay. So this one, and this piece is cut for that. So we're gonna take this out, and we've got that lined up. So again, don't pull those out. Um, <laughs> it's really almost hard not to want to like pull that off because you think, oh, that's the way that's supposed to go. But no, that's not it. So on this stamping, what I did was just the little cake Stamped it off really good. And again, if you need to tape these together, you can do that. And we're going to put a little light cake there. So you don't really see it. It's just light there, so it does that. And we want, hope your birthday is wonderful. And so we're going to stamp that in the shaded spruce over it. There we go. I really love the way these colors work together. They look really nice. Okay, so we've got that. So that is lined up perfectly. And then we have our little circle that we're gonna need to do. So we're just gonna set those two aside. And we want to do, I gotta find my sample here. I think he fell on the floor. All right, and we're gonna stamp make a wish. I didn't wanna just keep doing cake over and over and over again, so we're gonna kind of make our own little cake image here. So I'm gonna do make a wish right here. And this is still from that Stylish Shapes die, so again, I haven't used a lot of extra products with this. And then we're gonna use the Pool Party ink and we have a little tiny candle image. So I'm going to put a candle on top of each side here. I'm going to put one in the middle. And then I'm going to break the difference here. I'm going to put one on each side of that. And it kind of makes it look like a little birthday cake. And then there is this really bright flame. We're going to use that and we're doing crushed curry on that one. I'm just going to put those flames on each one of these candles. And our final thing to stamp before we forget is a little pool right here and I did that in pool party not pool party in the uh, shaded spruce so it would stand out it's pretty small but you will be able to see it just to alert everyone that that's where that opens at so you can see it just says pool all right so we are ready to put this bad boy together so again we want to turn this over and we want to put adhesive anywhere except for that in the middle. So this time I'm going to use the stamp and seal and I'm just going to put it around the edges here. And as long as I line this up with just that little bit of edge, we should be super duper close on getting that 
opening perfect. All right, so we've got it just like that. And then I'm going to put adhesive on the back here. Good. And that's going on a pool party base. All right, then we're going to put this one up with dimensionals. And again, on this one, I definitely would recommend you use the dimensionals just to kind of set that up off of the uh, the little pull tab. The other thing you could do here if you really wanted to is you could even put cash behind this if you wanted to. Before you closed it up you could put money behind it or a little note. Um, if you're really mean you could probably put some confetti back there. And we have a little extra little cake that I stamped. Put it there on the side. I just, this one's my favorite. I, I love it. I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive over here. A little dot of that. Put my ribbon in there. And I should have a little white flower somewhere. Let me see if it just got stuck in the envelope. If not, I'll have to find him later. He's probably in there somewhere. We'll find him later and put him on. But you can see little flower with the rhinestone. I'll put the rest of my rhinestones on there though. We don't want it to look completely naked. Oh, we didn't put any other rhinestones. Well, maybe we will on this one. All right, let's just add some then for fun. Make this one a little sparklier. If that's a word. And then when I find my flower, I will add it to this card. But you can see what the final one will look like. Here we go. All right. So, wow, we are moving right along on this. Really good. Um, like I said, this is the first day that I'm trying the Instagram streaming. So we, were, we will see truly how that works. I'm a little nervous about it. I'm not sure it's working at all. <laughs> um, or if it's going to mess things up. We'll see. All right. So our final card, and this one I probably struggled with the most. Um, and I will show you why and hopefully save you that frustration. This one has this little pull tab right here, okay? So you would think that little strip there isn't too difficult to deal with, but what I found, I did several of these, and I swear every single one ended up crooked. Um, it was just absolutely driving me crazy. So I used my grid paper to make my template and lined it up against those lines so that I could get it straight. Um, and really taped it down good to make sure it didn't wobble. Um, just again, this one was the hardest one just to get that template right. So then I put it on top of the designer series paper, taped it all down, and put that in and ran it through. Okay, so again, you want to make sure that that goes in pretty straight. All right, but that one was truly the hardest. Now, I went ahead on white cardstock and I cut the second one because really you could not hardly see this little strip unless I put something on there to make it stand out. So that's why I did that. And we're going to just do some fun little stamping on here. This one's pretty easy. Um, we're going to use our template to stamp a long reading inside so that when you pull that back, you are going to see it says, you are simply amazing. So we're going to grab our shaded spruce. Now this, you know, I, I said that for the most part, I didn't think you could use like other stamp sets with this. This is probably one place where you could actually use some different stamp sets with it. We're just going to put that right in the middle. Like so. And I am going to go ahead and put this on my card front. And again, just don't 
put any adhesive where that opening is. You want to make sure that area stays really nice and closed. All right, and we're just going to stack this right on here. And because we did that template, we know that that is going to line up when you pull that off. All right, then I'm going to put, well, I should probably wait until I stamp this, but we'll, we'll stamp it while it's on there. I'm just putting that right over that pull tab so that you can see it. And that way, when that comes up, it'll be a little easier to pull. All right, so we're going to use the little open here again. We used that on one of our other cards. We're going to stamp that down here at the end. And I just like the little heart image. My the heart's not wanting to stick very well. Let's see if we can get him straight and sticky. Okay. So these little bubble areas, I just thought it looked really cute to do that with. Gives it, makes it stand out a little better. All right, my cleaner over here. I'm gonna just clean that up a little bit. And we want to use the Pool Party ink for the other little ones. Alright, so we got Pool Party hearts as well. Don't worry if they're not perfect, it's just meant to be kind of a fun little border there. And then I have three hearts. And I want to stamp one of them to say, sending lots of love. There we go. And we've now got all of our stamping done, so we're just going to put all of that together. I'm sure you guys heard that little cash register sound. That's whenever anybody buys a tutorial or a thing. I thought I had those notifications off. It's actually a fun sound to hear. I do appreciate when you, when you purchase those. It helps me keep these classes going for you. I'm going to put this one on with some dimensionals. Hopefully. And and of course we need to add our bling. Can't be without that. And I used to be like so afraid to use too much bling. There's really no such thing, guys. Use as much as you like. I've never run out. We'll say that. <laughs> All right. And so there is that final card. And again, that just will rip right off of there. I actually did a short video of me ripping all of those off. So if you want to see that and see how they open, you can do that. And let me clear this off and I'll show you finals on all of these. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have about the projects. Um, and hopefully I've made them pretty simple for you and you'll give them a try. All right. Well, I'm going to be taking the next two weekends off. I'm going to be in Houston for the onstage event with Stampin' Up. And then I'm going to be out of town for spring break for a few days. So um, you will see me at the end of March, beginning of April. So it will be a little, a little bit of a hiatus, but I'll probably still have some recorded videos for you and some shorts. So um, be sure to subscribe before you leave, and that way you'll be notified the next time I go live. And I so appreciate you guys showing up today. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend.